Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at an improper integral. It's a case where one of the limits of integration is infinity or a non-permissible value. In this case it's infinity. And so I'll take you through it. This is a question actually that I put on an old calculus test for my students and let's walk through it together. The first thing is um, because these are limits of integration it does imply that we're going to evaluate the integral at 1 at infinity at some point. And infinity is not a number. It's an aspiration. So what we do is we do a little replacement. We say, okay, we're not going to accept infinity because we can't evaluate it at infinity. So we replace it with our favorite letter in the alphabet. I'm going to choose T. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as a limit. Now watch how nicely this fits together. What I'm going to do is not evaluate at infinity, but as t approaches infinity. So we're going to let t get closer to infinity. And then the rest of it just gets rewritten. I write my integral symbol from 1 to t, and then the rest of it, the integrand, is exactly the same. So x e to the negative x dx. Okay, and so at this stage what we do is we sort of just pay attention mainly to the integral. So we can integrate, I won't worry about the limits of integration, we'll just integrate x e to the negative x dx. And this one I'm going to use parts, you, I'm assuming you know parts. Parts means take the integrand and break it up into parts, hence the name. So we'll let part one part be a u and another part be a dv, a differential. So I'm going to let the x be the u and the e to the negative x, e to the negative x. Don't forget to take this differential and put it with the other differential so it allows you to integrate. Um, if I switch those, if I made this e to the negative x and this x, um, I'm going to encourage you to try that if you haven't already, um, but this is the better way to go. So I'm going to make the polynomial the thing that I take the derivative of and the um, exponential, the one that I integrate. Okay, so now what I do is I take the derivative of this one. So du equals dx. I break up the differentials, okay? So the derivative is broken into two parts. I could have said that's du by dx equals one and then think of cross multiplying, but I'll write it this way. Uh, this part here becomes integrated. So derivatives and integrals. So I'll say v here, I'll say e to the negative x here, but don't forget we have to divide by the derivative of the inside function which is negative 1x, so negative um, e to the negative x. Okay, and parts basically tells us it's, it's v, vu, so we, we, we crack this integral by multiplying these two and then integrating these two here, v du. Okay, so this is going to be equal to um, uv, which is negative x e to the negative x minus the integral of v du. It's just a formula that you'll remember. Since that's negative, it can be brought out in front and made that positive. So that's going to be e to the negative x dx. Okay, so if I can evaluate this, I'm good. This is a pretty easy thing to integrate. So this is going to be equal to negative x, e to the negative x. The antiderivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x divided by 1, or minus e to the negative x. Now, there is a plus c here, but because I'm going to take this and put it back into our improper integral, um, we do have limits of integration, which meaning we're dealing with a definite integral, even when we have an infinity. So I'm not going to worry about that here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace it. I've dealt with the integral. So this part here has been dealt with the integration. So I'm going to pick up, just come down to here, I'm going to say equals, and the limb is still around. We still have to take the limb, but we have to evaluate, we have to evaluate the integral um, first. So I'm going to leave that as t to the negative infinity. And instead of writing an integral symbol, I'm going to use a bracket and I'm going to place this inside. Now I notice that they both have an e to the negative x in common and they're both negative. So what I'm going to do is since they're both negative, I'm going to bring a negative out front. You can pull constants out front. And the common factor here is e to the negative x. 
And then what's left is x plus 1. x plus 1. And I'll close my bracket. I'll build a command line. I'm just using some vocabulary here. So the command line is where we place our limits of integration. So t, the upper limit, and 1, the lower limit there. Then all we have to do, don't worry about the limb. The limb is what we do at the very end. We're just thinking about evaluating. So I'm going to plug t in to this, and then 1 in to this, and then take the difference. So the limb is just coming along for the ride. The limb, as t approaches infinity, you don't forget there's a minus out front. And then I'm going to put t in where x is. So I'm going to get e to the negative t times t plus 1 minus, now I'm going to put a 1 in. So that's going to give me e to the negative 1 times 2. And I'll just put big brackets around that knowing that the limb is sitting there patiently waiting and then it's going to act on this. Now this is a constant, so the limb isn't going to really do anything to that. A constant is a constant. They're stubborn numbers. They're never going to change. So uh, what I'm going to do here, there's a negative here. I can think of bringing the negative through. So the answer here is going to be, well, I can write that as, maybe what I'll do is I'll write that as 1 over e. So that's going to be 2 over e minus the limb of this expression. Now that's got a negative exponent. Watch when we write it this way, t plus 1 over e to the t as t approaches infinity. So if I can figure out the limb of this expression, then I'm, I'm good to go. Well, in my class, basically because we would look at this as the, the function in the denominator is more powerful than this polynomial, students could literally just put a line through that and say that's zero. Now, if your teacher wants you to justify it, this you could use L'Hopital. Because notice that as t approaches infinity, you have an infinity over an infinity form. It's an indeterminate form meaning that the limit of this thing here is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. And I know just using my mind, the derivative of t plus 1 is 1, and the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. And that's clearly going to go to 0 as t approaches infinity. 1 over e to the t as t gets bigger and bigger, that's going to go to 0. So the final answer here is 2 over e. And you could have written that also as 2 times e to the negative 1. All right, there you go. That's how you crack an improper integral um, using limits. I looked at older books, and they don't do it like this, which is interesting. They do sort of keep those infinity limits. But the new math, the way we do it now, is we create this limit, and we replace it with a parameter. Choose the favorite letter in the alphabet for yourself, and there she be. If you like the video, don't forget to slap a like on it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you right back here in the next video.